back in the Pyrenees. After nine months, I stand in the same crossroad where I stood before. Yet this time, I'm taking a different road. But first, let me tell you how I got here. Twenty fifth of August, two thousand and twenty. I was in Banyuls quite spontaneously, at the beginning of what was about to become the greatest adventure of my life. I was about to cross the Pyrenees, sea to ocean. I didn't have any plan, just my backpack, my journal, and my tent. All I need, really. Most of the water sources were dried out or turned into muddy puddles. I drank from very questionable sources, but it was fun. Dusty, hot, challenging but beautiful, nevertheless. In the 40 degrees Celsius, I was hoping for more water, and well, after a few weeks, my wishes were granted. Though, they became watery a bit too much. At the end of September, Pyrenees got covered in snow, and to my luck, all the refugees started to be close, and therefore my traverse became a bit challenging. It was snowing in higher altitudes and raining in the lower ones for about two weeks. My poncho became my best friend and my worst enemy at the same time. I was not very picky about my friends though, because the Pyrenees became very lonesome and in the snow there were often no other footsteps than mine. That was just when I reached the high Pyrenees and as much as I tried to continue on the trail, after one experience of almost freezing and sudden snowstorm, I decided to put my ego away leave the GR10 and I started creating my own path in lower elevations. Nevertheless, that snowy, cold and confusing part of my journey was actually the most magical. When in high Pyrenees, I expected to see the highest peaks, but I got something much grander. People started opening the doors of their homes, as well as their hearts to me. And even though I didn't manage to see the highest of the Pyrenees, I found the highest in humanity. And indeed, the detour that the Pyrenees made me take led me to the path I was destined to walk. I rejoined the GR10 in my beloved Pay Basque. The temperatures were still close to zero and everything was closed, but I was so happy to be back on my trail, back where I feel at home. I saw rainbows, but things weren't so easy either. After the coldest weather since 1989, there came the strong winds of up to 215 km per hour. They broke my tent and one time they took me down as well. All these difficult experiences that wouldn't let me finish easily has taught me that with flexible and open mind, strong will, clear motivation and devotion to our desires, we can do and achieve anything we thirst. If only we remain persistent and decide to walk our path with trust, even when we don't know where it's taking us. And sometimes I didn't like the way, but I learned to love it anyway. I've reached the ocean on 27th of October 2020, after 63 days and almost 1000 kilometers. It was already dark, but I knew instantly that wasn't the end. I knew I must return one day and finish what I have started, because I fell in love with the Pyrenees and because all the moments when I thought I would die were in fact the birth of my renaissance. I decided to not come home to Prague, but to stay in the mountains where I found my home within. So for seven months I was volunteering at different projects in the Pyrenees and in the Alps, but that's a different story. When the summer of 2021 finally came to the mountains, I was ready to return home, home to the Pyrenees, on the GR10, where I left my heart and found it at the same time. And so, here I am. Everything looks just as I have left it, with 10 degrees of a difference. I walk in rain and very thick fog and I must accept that this part of the GR10 I was not meant to see. So I surrendered to the white clouds and trusted that they will surprise me. Salut toi! I love you, so why do you hate me? I asked the Pyrenees as if they were spitefully laughing at me with all the unpleasant weather. Then I looked at all the beautiful flowers, which were in the same rain and on the same mountain as me, with one difference, they were at peace. Why do we always try to have the grass greener and emotions merrier? It is what it is, so let it be.
I sat down. I felt my butt getting wet from the damp soil. I kept observing. I was the water, the air, the ground. Normally, I notice just a little bit of what there actually is. Mostly, I notice with my eyes. But it's so refreshing to feel the mountains with my other senses. Feel the wind leaning on my skin, the wet ground under my feet, listening to the creek, and the songs of the birds, cowbells, the taste of chocolate in my mouth. Being, not just with my eyes, there's so much more to being than what we can see. Being back, I can see how much I have changed. I'm not sure if I can put it into words, but I is different. More relaxed, less stressed, no plans, I just walk. And I put my tent in nice places, I brush my teeth with the sound of the river, and my heart shines from how cute my tent looks in the forest. It can be very simple if we don't make it too complicated. I was worrying about the weather forecast, but in the morning I was surprised by a blue sky. See? Don't check the weather forecast, you will walk no matter what. So, why stress? There was this one quote that really got stuck in my mind. Worrying is worshipping the devil. And I really feel that. It reminds me of the story I heard about the goat herd in Ariège. When they encountered a bear, they all jumped off the mountain. 300 goats dead. And sometimes I act like a goat. I jump right into the abyss of my own fear. Something may scare me, the dark clouds, the closed refugees, the loneliness. So I run away and I jump into the deep dark worries that are slowly killing me. Or my spirit, at least. I wanted to go further, but I felt tired, so I decided to stop and camp. No one else around me, except the cows. I'm cold and alone, not in a lonely way though. I'm glad that last year the Pyrenees decided to take me another way, maybe just so I have a reason to come back. To see them blooming once I have already blossomed. But I'm also glad to be walking them when they were turning golden and all the life was fading away. Meanwhile, mine was being born. Fear. We over-exaggerate. There was a sign telling me I cannot cross the bridge. The bridge that was my only way to continue. So many frightening scenarios in my head. What will I do? How can I get to the other side? Then I approached the bridge. I lifted the sign. And I crossed the bridge. Our mind loves to create stories. And problems to keep itself occupied. But the reality is much more simple than our over-dramatized thoughts. That's why I meditate, to find a state of observation. Everything we can think about can become a reality. So, where are you focusing your attention? Instead of crying over fallen bridges, let's think about ways how to cross them. Everything is possible, especially after moments of uncertainty. In the past week, I didn't meet any people. Well, there are people, but I guess in the Pyrenees, I'm destined to walk alone. After all, the Pyrenees are with me in every step I take, and in their company, I can truly enjoy my own. They are more than just mountains. They are alive, they are full of soul. I'm happy to know them and feel at home with them. And I'm so happy that they like me back, just the way I am. Even when I was questioning them, when I tried to fight them, they have always guided me with love, leaving me presence along the way. 
and mostly they have made me feel worthy of accepting them. Descending to the valley, I had an amazing view of the rocket trail. Blacking life, distant, a bit cold, even on a warm day. The only liveliness was added by the curious tourists. I have to say, even though the loneliness was growing over me, the crowds were far from pleasing me. They almost told the rawness, the grandiosity of foreign land, that men must ask to touch to step on. It seems the crowds are walking without permission, not even realizing that the mountain is not of their belonging. In the evening, the storm came. I was a little scared, in the way I enjoy. In the way that makes you humble and calm, rather free of expectations. For anything can happen, if the wind decides so. Soon after I started walking, my leg was screaming at me with pain. I sat down. At first I tried to ignore it, but it made itself clear that it is to be heard. Walking was hard. Following the path was hard. I missed the sign often and I had to come back a few times. I really felt like giving up and ending this day at 10 am. I'm not destined to walk today, I thought as I was stuffing my mouth with chocolate to make the pain of mere living go away. Or at least the pain of my leg. Well, I didn't give up. 1400 meters of ascent. Am I ready? No. Will I do it anyway? Yes. And so up I went, and as I have changed my mind, my day changed as well. It was nice and my legs stopped hurting. I enjoyed my work because I was present. And when you are present, it doesn't matter what the external situation is. It is a state of non-judgment, non-comparison. It is a state of being, where you are, and thus not worrying about where you were, could be, or will be. It reminded me of the day when I celebrated my first month on the trail. I wrote, I would be lying if I said that it's the most magical adventure I've ever gone to, that every day is covered in glitters and fairy dust. No, the truth is, I feel kind of lonely and tired and cold. Yes, every day there is something beautiful and glittery, but overall, I'm alone in the mountains and sometimes they scare me. They are grand, dark and gloomy. I'm not covered in fairy dust, in fact, I'm covered in mud and cow shit. avant de se coucher, uh, we drink a, a little tea. Uh -huh. Voilà. Up there, with this amazing view and beautiful people, I decided that this is where my GR10 comes to an end. The crossing of the Pyrenees is done, even though I've already done it. Being at the same place where I've stood before, 
I realized how much it all changed. How from admiring the ocean from afar, I went to feeling at home there. I belong here, no doubt. I took a bus and I joined my new friends who were walking the other direction. To walk the same paths I've already walked, but completely different, nevertheless. And after a few days, I was back at a cabin where I slept nine months ago, alone, cold, in the snow. Nine months ago, I was climbing for five hours in rain that soon turned into snow. There were no other footsteps than mine. I was standing on a huge snowfield, some mountain tops peeking from behind the mist. I was tired and cold. There was nothing. White, all around me. It was so peaceful. It felt like a different reality. And I had a feeling that if I went further up the mountain, I would disconnect from mine forever. Forever in peace in this winter wonderland. I didn't like it and I liked it at the same time. It felt like death. Quiet, peaceful, vast, nothingness. Larger than life. I just wanted to run away from there. If I stayed in the cabin, I could never go back, nor further, I felt. I would disappear in the peaceful, quiet vastness and become part of it. So I ran, back on the same path I just climbed, through the snow and the paths that turned into creeks. The hill was steep and muddy, but I just wanted to be down. I had one hour of flight. At the same time, I would like to stay and observe the abyss, but I wanted to be far from there. I realized I really want to live, to experience. I want to get angry, frustrated and sad, happy, warm, cozy, in love. I want to keep going no matter what, loudly and fast, then quietly and slowly. Because eternal peace and quiet is not a matter of life, it's death. So I ran, I ran back to life. That is messy and confused, full of emotions, full of experiences. It cannot be caught and tamed. And today I wanted to run again, again on the hill where I ran months ago. This time in the greenest grass with colorful flowers and sunshine on my skin. Perhaps to find again the strength I have found there before, or to see the same smiles. Or to just realize it's all gone, even if it's still alive within me. I have finished the GR10. One year after I crossed the Pyrenees, but I've done it. It was not linear at all. For one year I was going back and forth, until I finally walked it all. Last evening on the trail, I made myself a tea, and there was a message. Sometimes the turtle can tell you more about the way than the rabbit. When I first saw the Pyrenees on the map, the names were unknown and the path not to be found. Words were mixing up with feelings, they left me speechless. Yet in desperate need to describe them, to translate their wordless language into familiar words. So many of those lessons are still to be translated, to be lived, to be written under my skin, through my heart. So perhaps one day I might tell the world what they have told to me. I live them every day. Their language is not one of words, it's a language of deeply felt actions translated into my life. I really live the Pyrenees in every step I take, and lots of those steps I took just because of them. They keep pushing me forward, inspiring me to chase my dreams, as I see them in the horizon, reminding me of the path I decided to take. They have taught me that if I take the wrong path, it is the right one for me. If I would prefer to see something else that I'm seeing, I need to truly start looking. If I feel something I don't want to be feeling, I need to sit my ass on the ground and feel it. And I need to go where my intuition tells me, even if it scares me. For me, the Pyrenees are my best friend. For me, they represent the source of the ultimate wisdom. Anytime I ask, they offer me an answer. Answer that already lies within me. They show me the wisdom within me, and you, and us all. 
and what helps you to listen to yourself. Where do you feel alive? Where do you hear your heart loud and clear?